What is happening y'all? Cowboy here and in this video we are going to be looking at the top 5 weapons and top 5 Ashes of War in Elden Ring. Now while this is an opinionated based list as every list is, these are my recommendations after 250 plus hours in the game. Uh, everything that I talk about on this list is capable of either clearing out entire hordes of enemies or doing immense amounts of damage to bosses and Pretty much as soon as you decide you're going to use anything on this list, you are going to see a significant, significant reduction in the difficulty of the game. Uh, these are all just incredibly powerful tools that you have available to you. And, and honestly, I don't think anything on this list really needs to get nerfed necessarily, at least from a PvE perspective. Uh, I think a big part of Elden Ring is that we can lean heavier into the power fantasy than we have in previous Souls games. But either way, let's jump into it. Uh, the first thing we have up on our list is the Sacred Relic Sword. Now, real fast, just for the purpose of testing, almost everything I have is upgraded to just below max. I have a few that are plus 10, such as this, but, you know, plus 9, these are plus 24. Uh, but let's talk about it. Sacred Relic Sword is one of the best weapons in the game. Probably the best from a pure, unique skill perspective. Wave of Gold is absolutely staggering. It has a huge, huge distance it covers. It also has a absolutely ridiculous amount of uh, kill potential. It's super wide on the AoE. And for all the testing, we're just going to be right here at Gatefront. So we're just going to let these dudes group on up. Uh, the only real weakness of the skill is enemies can block it or roll through it. But, I mean, that's kind of true for everything. But throwing out Wave of Gold, I mean, this is this is devastating. You know, a lot of people are starting to use this in PvP. And this thing just goes and goes and goes. And pretty much if an enemy's not blocking or they don't roll, they're going to get hit by it and they're going to die. Uh, it's just it's super powerful. It's insane how strong this thing is. Now, of course, this is definitely one of the pricier options on our list. Keep in mind, this comes in at 50 FP per cost, which is definitely up there. As you can see at 20 mind, I only have 100 FP, enough for two costs of it. So very pricey to use, but obviously it has absolutely devastating results. Moving on down our list, Blasphemous Blade. Now, this is another strength dex faith weapon, and in terms of raw stats, this one will actually hit a little bit harder. I mean, given it's obviously plus 10, but we have better scaling here with CCB versus the DBC. Uh, and what's great about the Blasphemous Blade is not only is the unique skill very powerful, but this also restores HP when you take enemies out. So because of that, we have a weapon that, in my opinion, is possibly the best PvE weapon in the game. In terms of, like, just going through general content, I actually like using this even more than the Sacred Relic Sword, just because of the heal effect on it. I mean, being able to get a ton of health back in combat is always going to be super useful. And we're going to let these dudes just beat on me for a second here. I'm going to put on some extra arrows. There we go. So I'm about a little bit past health, right? Now, obviously, this works great when you can get enemies grouped up in a line because it's not going to be as wide as Sacred Relic Sword, but it still has pretty damn good reach. And when it comes out, it's just going to go through enemies, and you can see a bunch of health coming back in. See, almost back to full health just with two uses of that and so this makes this just a really nice sword in pve i mean god you're getting so much healing that comes out of it it's a little bit cheaper to use as well it's coming in at 30 fp per cast so with a build like this with only the 20 mine you can get three casts of these before you're out um, but this also has pretty long range similar to that of wave of gold and obviously with the damage it's doing and the heal effect on it it is definitely a really really strong choice for general progression in the game now, moving on down the list again, this next one should be no surprise to anybody, the Sword of Night and Flame. Now, this is definitely the most unique weapon on the list because it actually has a dual unique skill. Depending on if we hit R1 or R2, we get different effects. R1 is going to be the Night Comet Sorcery, very similar to Comet Azure, except it doesn't last nearly as long. And then it also has a sweeping, uh, sweeping flame strike on its heavy attack. Now this one does have one very, very obvious weakness, and that is its ability to hit targets on elevation. Even with as little of an elevation difference as what we have right here at the Gatefront Ruins, it's very easy to miss the R1 attack. So you need to be on even ground with the enemy when you try to use it. Uh, right here, this might connect, let's see. 
you can see he just scoots out of the way slightly and it's going to miss but if it connects it does an incredible amount of damage and that makes this a really good choice just for trying to get damage in on bosses uh, in terms of arts there's two different costs there's a 19 fp cost and then a 23 fp cost so you can actually use this quite a few times and you're going to get really solid damage in when you use it i don't know why this guy hasn't come on call call your friends let's go hurry up trying to showcase stuff uh, the second one, that's going to be our better AoE option. That is going to be the Flame Wave. Now, it doesn't go incredibly far. In fact, it's definitely one of the shorter skills. You can see that guy. He was at, like, the maximum distance for it. But it certainly has the damage that we look for in these weapon arts. So, while it doesn't have the crazy range that we have on something like the Blasphemous Blade or on Wave of Gold, it does have the ability to just decimate hordes of enemies that have decided they want to group up in front of you. And because of that, and the dual nature of it, being able to do two different skills, I definitely think it earns a spot in terms of the top PvE weapons. Now, as I head on over to rest, let's get our fourth weapon on, and this is one for the Strength Gang. It's going to reset real fast, and we'll talk about this. And this is the Ruin's Greatsword. Now, the Ruin's Greatsword unique skill, Wave of Destruction, is actually very similar to that of Blasphemous Blade. We don't have the heal effect, but it's roughly going to go just as far. It's going to be roughly just as wide. And what's so nice about this is usually with strength in particular, you know, we are more limited to just kind of zug-zug and fighting our way through enemies. And this gives strength builds a very, very potent ability that has excellent wave clear. So on top of it just being a monstrous weapon capable of doing tons and tons of damage, we, of course, have a unique skill that is able to clear out those big groups of enemies. So as you can see, pretty much everyone blocked this. And one thing that's interesting to note with this skill versus the others is that this is going to be physical damage. Uh, gravitational magic, all gravity magic in the game is actually considered physical. So enemies can just block this a lot easier than they'd be able to block something like the fire or the holy effect on either Blasphemous or on Sacred Relic Sword. Uh, but I don't think that makes it any less useful. I mean, there are very few times that strength weapons have this kind of just destructive power in terms of, like, an AoE option, you know? That's not usually something we get. And this thing definitely has the damage. Now if I can just survive and get back over there while I'm fat rolling. Uh, and then our fifth weapon on the list, and this should be no surprise to anybody, but it is the Moonvale Katana. Uh, now, the Moonvale Katana is both one of the most prominent weapons we're seeing in PvP at the moment, in addition to a very strong choice in PvE. Depending on if you do a light attack or a strong attack, you'll have two different abilities that come on out. Um, actually, I didn't mention on this. This one's 25 FP, so pretty, pretty cheap cost on that. This one has two separate costs of 15 and 20. But we have the short range wave, and this is great if enemies are jumping up on you. Uh, not exactly the longest reach on that, but our heavy attack does have a much longer reach, and that makes this a fantastic weapon art for pretty much any mage. And throw that out very, very quickly, and that's what makes this so dangerous, even in PvP, is just how fast that ability comes out. If something's charging at you, you sheath, throw it on out. You can see the distance on it is pretty good. And this isn't going to have the sheer wave clear of a lot of the other things on this list, but it certainly has the damage. This isn't even a dedicated int build, and you can see we're hitting for around 1,000 damage on it. You can see the wave doesn't have the same AoE clear that we have on something like Sacred. I'm trying to get, get a good example of two enemies grouped up. This might be my best bet. These two right here. Come on, lads. Get a little bit closer together. So you can see you can hit multiple enemies with it. They do need to be fairly close. But the real usage of this is going to be in the R2. It just comes out super fast. Does really good damage. And the big thing is just how this the sheer speed on this. It comes out so quickly that it ends up catching people trying to roll away in PvP a lot. And not only that, but it actually makes it really easy to spam this against bosses. If you're up against a boss, you can toss that out, roll away, toss that out, dodge away toss that out and right there that was just 3,000 damage almost instantly and the range is pretty solid on that I mean it's not going to go super far from about here Let's see if we can hit the target with it so you don't need to be right on top of the target to use it either all around just a fantastic weapon 
Now the next things on our list you can use with pretty much any weapon in the game, and these are going to be more focused on ashes. So to start, and this one, in my opinion, is probably just the strongest general use ash in the game, and that's going to be a horror frost stop. A Hort Frost, of course, you can get pretty early as well, making it a very solid choice. Uh, but on top of causing Frostbite, which will make enemies take 20% additional damage, this is actually a very, very wide art. Doing the stop, you can see just how wide that spreads. You can see that guy already died. And so this allows you to just have a really solid AoE option with pretty much any weapon in the game. You know, you're getting surrounded, you toss that on out. And you can see the damage is definitely respectable. What's happening here is there's multiple hits going on when we do Horfrost Stop. So we have that kind of initial hit when it first goes out, and then after that, it's gonna explode. And then a lot of those enemies are also receiving the Frostbite proc. So very, very strong skill, almost regardless of what you're using. You can see right there, we used it to shield break that guy. And probably the craziest thing about this is this is dirt cheap. This is only 10 FP. So it definitely makes it probably the strongest single Ash of War in the game, just in terms of its clear potential, as well as how cheap it is and the fact that you can just keep throwing that out for big, big chunks of damage. Moving on down from there though, we have Hora Lose Earthshaker. Now this is another very late game ability that you can get. Uh, and while this doesn't have the same speed as some of the other abilities, it does have the ability to go through shields, and it has an immense amount of poise when you use it. So this is a great one. You're being grouped up. You do that, and then boom! You can see big, big, thick damage going out. And you can see there's that little roar that's happening, and that roar is staggering up a lot of the enemies that are trying to attack us. Even when using something bigger like this guy, I think we might be able to poise through him. All right, so we didn't get it all the way off, but you can see there, we took, what, three or four hits from the spear? So, very solid ability because of the poise that you're gonna get from it, as well as the ability to clear. We can actually chain this one. Let me get a little bit more health before we try doing that. So, after your stop. Actually, I might be thinking of, of the Horlu ability. No, yeah, follow up with an additional input to slam the ground again, okay. The horror lube, the, the actual weapon, has a stomp followed by a heavy charge. This one has the double stomp. There we go. So, yeah, pretty solid option. Now, obviously, you know, this is one that I would recommend mainly for my beefy boys out there because, obviously, while we are pretty uninterruptible, there's obviously a chance that you're going to take a few hits trying to get this one off. But I don't think that makes it any less potent, you know. You, you have that little roar that's going to interrupt people, and then when you consider the damage and the wave clear on it, I think this is definitely one that is is worth mention and is able going to, you know, it's going to be able to do some serious clear, especially on our stronger builds that are able to take some hits, especially because of the, the little mini shot that we have that's going to be interrupting enemies. All around a really solid choice if you don't like your weapon art and you want something to go with a beefier weapon. Now, if you want something that's good for faster weapons, we have Sapuku. Now, Sapuku is absolutely ridiculous because it's not only going to increase our attack power, but it's going to give us an immense amount of bleed. So we are currently at 551 AR. This is a very simple art. We take a little bit of damage. We break the blade in blood. And this buff is going to last quite a while. So you can see we're up to 581, which isn't a huge damage increase. And to be honest, it's not even going to be able to be demonstrated that well on these enemies. But while a lot of builds would, you know, put something in Arcane to build up their bleed, Sempuku just does a massive amount of bleed buildup. And we all know how strong bleed is in this game. Even with this guy blocking, I think it should only be probably one or two more attacks and we'll have to bleed on him. This one is going to be a lot better with faster weapons, you know. We want to talk about building up and bleed on hits. Uh, and that's where faster weapons are going to shine. I mean, I, don't know, I feel kind of silly demonstrating it here. I should go to a giant. It's really hard to show off bleed against little targets like this. You know what? Yeah, let's actually, let's do that. Just because I want to have a an accurate showing of what makes all of these things so good. So we're going to run on over to some giants real fast. Actually, you know what? We can probably use that giant that jumps right down. I'll probably end up getting interrupted or something. Let me see. This should be... Yeah, we can go right here. There's a singular giant on the hill, and that'll be a good example of Sampuku. 
Now, once again, I think this is best on faster weapons. That's not to say you can't use it on big weapons. I've seen people running around with bleed greatswords, basically dashing in and poking uh, and, and doing, you know, half a bar of bleed buildup with one hit in PvP. So you can certainly use this on your bigger weapons as well. Uh, but in general, you know, the faster you're attacking, the more attacks you're getting in, the more bleed that you're going to be building up. And what's great about this is if you want to keep your weapon standard or heavy or whatever the case is, you really want to take advantage of your scaling, but you want to have solid bleed, that's where this comes in. So you can see, four swings was enough to proc the blood. And obviously, this is something that's pretty slow. You know, great swords are not known for their fast attack speed. If you're using this on something like claws or straight swords or katanas, you're going to be swinging very quickly and you're going to see those blood procs happening very quickly. And even though it doesn't have the AOE clear potential of a lot of the other things that we've already featured in this video, uh, bleed is certainly one of the strongest mechanics in the game right now because it's HP percentage based. And what this means is that it's not just, you know, you get a blood proc and you do 500 damage. The proc is going to be dependent on how beefy the target is. So on some of these late game bosses, on things like dragons, bleed is just it's staggering because you're going to see procs for well over a thousand when bleed goes off and then you just keep attacking and you keep procking it so definitely something that should not be discounted now our next two ashes are more exclusive to some bigger weapons you have to use them on colossals warhammers things like that uh, but they are definitely quite powerful and the first one we're going to talk talking about is golden land now this is the same ability that the Erd trees use uh, very strong we have a follow-up strong attack that we can do. Uh, has a immense amount of poise potential in terms of poise break. This is strong enough that even something like a Crucible Knight, you can actually stagger a Crucible Knight to the point where you can get a critical attack on him. So very, very strong, uh, very strong weapon art, especially in, in you know more boss scenarios. But you throw this on down, there's going to be a multiple hits that go out. And then you're going to have these little lasers that come out too. And the big strength of this one, this one's more going to be a single target. But we have, as you can see, a nice amount of damage going out. We have multiple hits going off with that thing. Using something like the big boy here, we'll try and target him. You can see whoever you're locked onto, these little things are going to shoot in. And they're just like a little icing on the cake, you know. Those aren't really there to do, do the big damage, but... So you can see we're knocking back enemies and even enemies like this guy we, we weren't even targeting him but you'll notice he got forced down for a stagger break and that's what makes this such a dangerous ability is you're able to use this and get staggers off on enemies and then of course you can follow up with the free critical which will do a ton of damage uh, all in all definitely a very solid ash of war especially if you're using bigger stuff or even not necessarily colossal but just something like a warhammer i mean this has the same swing speed as like a great sword but we're able to put something like that on it and do a ton of damage. Our next one is going to be similar, but more AoE focused, and this is Waves of Darkness. But remember, I want to say this actually comes from one of the final bosses. And just for the record, any of this stuff, I mean, at this point, the wiki is populated. You can Google any of these names and very quickly find a guide on where to get it. Uh, but this is a very, very strong AoE option. What I like a lot about this is that it's set and forget. So the idea is that you're going to put this on down, you're going to slam, and then we're going to see two waves and then a third wave. And that third wave is delayed, and it has a larger range. And so what's nice about this is it has waves of enemies, and we're going to have put that down, and then right after we do it, we can roll out, and it's going to keep going off. That third wave is going to expand out. Instead of rolling out, if you want to keep fighting, we get it down. And you can continue to attack while that's going out. And so it's just extra damage, it's extra AoE clear. And it's also going to be classified as physical damage, I believe. I think Waves of Darkness uh, kind of falls under that same that same uh, threshold as other types of gravity magic. Which all gravity magic is physical, of course. So very strong damage on that. Uh, in my tests, I actually found that was doing more damage than Golden Land. And that's not just because this is 25 and 24. It's because I was testing it uh, back for the strength build. Um, but yeah, so that is going to be it for this video. Those would be my five top ashes, my five top weapons. Now, I want to be clear, this is not an exhaustive list. There is lots and lots and lots of stuff in the game 
that is fantastic aside from what I mentioned. For arcane builds, I mean, the Reduvia can get bleed build up incredibly fast. Uh, for builds that want to use it, well, I don't like it for PvP. The Dark Moon Greatsword has ridiculous amounts of damage and frost build up, which is very strong. You know, using something like Malakath's Blackblade, if you can get off Death and Death, it's going to do a ton of damage. So there are a ton of weapons and a ton of ashes in this game that can really put out tons and tons of damage. But in my opinion, these are the ones that stood out to me in all the time I played where if you're using one of these, you're going to be able to just nuke bosses. You're going to be able to nuke hordes of enemies. And all in all, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So that's going to wrap things up for me. I got to get back to getting this walkthrough done. So thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you all next time.